from the moment sperm meets egg, there is a delicate process of fertilization and implantation. Planning before conception to create an ideal environment for this to take place is important. According to the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, the concentration of vitamin C is much higher in human follicular fluid than in blood serum levels. They also found that ascorbic acid plays a role as an antioxidant during folliculogenesis or the maturation of a fertilizable egg. We found that vitamin C supplementation caused improvement in 53% of luteal phase defect cases, whereas 22% of patients with luteal phase defect had spontaneous improvement. An elevated antioxidant protection during ovulation and the mid-luteal phase appears to be present in eumenoroic women. Estradiol and vitamin C levels rise synergistically. Both are antioxidants with a purpose of protecting the body during ovulation and possible conception. Hormone balancing can be done with high doses of vitamin C. Adequate intake of amino acids is also crucial for the production of hormones. It's not just a woman's job to prepare for conception. A man can also improve the health and count of his sperm to improve the chances of conception. There is much scientific literature on ascorbic acid protecting sperm. Low levels of ascorbic acid in seminal fluid is a risk factor for male infertility. Men should be consuming no less than 10 grams of ascorbic acid daily or 1 to 3 grams of liposomal vitamin C. It's best to start dosing before conception. Vitamin B3 is an excellent micronutrient for conception. A high concentration of vitamin B3 in follicular fluid are associated with the development of larger follicles, improving oocyte quality. Vitamin B3 is necessary for the production of estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, cortisone, throxine, and also insulin. Lower levels of CoQ10 can cause a woman's eggs to have less energy and poor fertilization. Vitamin D3 is a powerful regulator of progesterone levels. Many studies show that vitamin D has a positive effect on male fertility and sperm motility. Vitamin D deficiency is extremely common. And so during conception, it is essential to supplement this vital nutrient if one is not getting adequate sunshine every day. Because protein is a precursor to hormones, it is imperative to get adequate amounts in the diet during conception and all through pregnancy. Women who supplement omega-3 fatty acids are 1.5 times more likely to conceive than those who do not supplement. Endometriosis can cause a woman to have trouble achieving pregnancy, but an article by Women's Health of London found that Vitamin C has a significant effect on reducing the induction and growth of endometrial implants, improving the fecundity function of ovaries, and consequently prevention of endometriosis-associated cancers. An article by Pain Research and Management discovered that the intake of vitamin C and vitamin E supplements effectively reduced dysmenorrhea severity and improved dyspareunia and severity of pelvic pain. Vitamin C plays a protective role against polycystic ovarian syndrome because of its anti-apoptotic and antioxidant actions. Vitamin B8 as inositol has been shown to decrease the levels of male hormones in the body. Inositol also promotes ovulation and improves fertility. Because vitamin B3 deficiency is common in PCOS, inositol hexanacotinate would be a good daily supplement. A common cause of miscarriage overlooked by mainstream medicine is MTHFR mutations. This makes folate extremely important to supplement. MTHFR mutations impair metabolic pathways causing oxidative stress. Because vitamin C cleans up oxidative stress by donating electrons, it is imperative that those with the mutation supplements adequate doses. Riboflavin deficiency can cause issues for those with MTHFR mutation. Riboflavin is the precursor to FAD, the coenzyme required for the activity of the folate metabolizing enzyme, also known as MTHFR. Take 1 to 4 mg daily. B vitamins work synergistically together, so a B complex would be ideal. Hormone imbalance and infertility can be resolved with adequate vitamin C and the resolution of other deficiencies. Vitamin C does not cause miscarriage. The vitamin C pioneers that worked closely with pregnant women found that it actually protects a pregnancy. The idea that vitamin C causes miscarriages comes from an erroneous study that omitted much information. The scientists assumed that because a woman was late for her period that she was in fact pregnant. No pregnancy test was ever done, and high doses of vitamin C brought their periods on. It's entirely possible that none of the women in the study were ever pregnant, 
and vitamin C was simply resolving hormone imbalance. I have had the privilege of witnessing hundreds of women take high doses and experience problem-free conceptions, pregnancies, and births. The greatest lie ever told about vitamin C is that it causes abortions. This lie has frightened women all around the world from taking doses above the RDA, when higher doses could be the key to protecting women from diseases that put them and their babies at risk. There is much literature that exists on the safety and efficacy of vitamin C therapy during pregnancy. Erwin Stone, an American biochemist, chemical engineer, and writer, documented vitamin C's healing benefits for pregnancy in his book, The Healing Factor. On admission to the hospital for childbirth, 80% of the patients were given a booster, injection of 10 grams of ascorbic acid intravenously. Labor was shorter, less painful, and uncomplicated. Striae gravidarum, abdominal wrinkles after childbirth, was seldom seen, and there were no postpartum hemorrhages. During childbirth, the perineum was remarkably elastic and episiotomy was performed electively. Healing was always by first intention. 15 to 20 years after the last childbirth, the firmness of the perineum is found to be like that during the first childbirth, provided the patient continued on large daily intakes of ascorbic acid. No toxic manifestations were demonstrated in this series. And there was no cardiac stress, even though 22 patients in the series had rheumatic hearts. Vitamin C megadosing is extremely safe for pregnancy. Dr. Robert Scott had 500 patients on megadoses of vitamin C, and all of his patients gave birth to healthy babies. The mother's labors were shorter than average and lowered the incidence of stretch marks. Dr. William Sackerman found that his patients on high doses of vitamin C also experienced shorter and less painful labors. He found that the birth canal of vitamin C megadosing mothers was more elastic, making tearing less likely. Dr. Sackerman found that stretch marks were less likely to occur and that these women recovered rapidly during their postpartum time. In Dr. Archie Calocarino's book, Every Second Child, he recounts the vitamin C pregnancies he oversaw. He found that the incidence of long labors, stress during labor, retained placentas, and other complications were considerably reduced. He described the vitamin C babies as marvelous and was impressed by how incredible their immune systems were against recurrent infections. Dr. Frederick Klenner recommended 5, 10, and 15 grams of vitamin C for each trimester. I find that a base dose of 10 grams for all trimesters works great. Some women choose to take less because of a sensitive stomach or morning sickness. Others choose to take much higher doses because that is what they had been doing before conception. There is no precise dose for all women. During pregnancy, the two preferable forms of vitamin C are ascorbic acid or liposomal vitamin C. Both are safe and effective. Many diseases of pregnancy can be prevented or alleviated using adequate vitamin C. In Dr. Frederick Klenner's years as a physician, he oversaw 322 pregnant patients that he put on high doses of vitamin C without complications. During the first trimester, vitamin C megadosing can make normal pregnancy bloat and indigestion worse. Sometimes the form of liposomal vitamin C can alleviate this issue. If you are finding ascorbic acid difficult to take, lower the doses dramatically and spread them out as far as you need to. The most important thing is finding a comfortable dose that works for your lifestyle. Vitamin C flushes can be safe if done gently without causing watery bowels. Taking enough vitamin C to cause soft bowels is ideal. This can help move things along when pregnancy constipation becomes an issue. A flush can be used to help alleviate morning sickness by helping the body excrete excess hormones. Vitamin C has hepatoprotective effect against cholestatic liver injury, making it an excellent remedy for those with cholestasis. Vitamin K has been shown to reduce the incidence of cholestatic liver disease. The European Society for Clinical Nutrition and Metabolism wrote in a study that those with above adequate dietary vitamin C intake were less likely to develop gestational diabetes. It is important to point this out because ascorbate and glucose molecules are similar, and some glucose monitors can mistake the two. If someone on high-dose vitamin C experiences a high reading, it may be wise to try a different monitor or stop taking vitamin C for a short period. There is a strong correlation between low vitamin D levels and the development of gestational diabetes mellitus, 
Hyperemesis gravidarum may be a result of high histamine serum levels. Vitamin C is an antihistamine, making it an excellent remedy. High doses can arrest an overabundance of histamine. Scientists found that preeclampsia can not only be treated, but also prevented using larger doses of vitamin B3. One study found that vitamin B3 is the first safe drug that alleviates preeclampsia, and that it also alleviates or prevents miscarriage, prolongs pregnancy period, and improves the growth of the fetuses in mice with preeclampsia. Vitamin D deficiency can also be a cause for preeclampsia and preterm labor. Because this deficiency is so common, it's essential to begin supplementing vitamin D during conception. It is common to experience thyroid changes during pregnancy. Vitamin C protects the thyroid and supports the changes in the body. Most of the women that come to learn about vitamin C are in search of a strong amniotic sac to prevent PROM. It's true that the amniotic sac of a pregnant mother taking high doses of vitamin C is very strong. The synergistic relationship between vitamin C and collagen synthesis fortifies the amniotic sac. Protein and fatty acids are also essential for the development of the amniotic membranes. Many women find that their vitamin C babies are born in call, or they choose to have their amniotic sac broken because its strength is slowing the dilation of the cervix. It seems entirely possible that many diseases of pregnancy are associated with a micronutrient deficiency or dependency that isn't being fulfilled. The scientific literature in treating these diseases with nutrition is abundant, and the outcomes are safe and effective. In 2019, I gave birth to my fifth child. I was told of the risks of hemorrhage and how risky childbirth is for multiparas. With high-dose vitamin C intake, the risks are extremely low. After the birth of my daughter, the obstetrician came to me and said he had never seen such little blood loss, especially from a multip. Vitamin C had not only prevented hemorrhage but also kept my red blood cells replenished. It is important for no one to pull on the umbilical cord. This can increase the risk of hemorrhaging. Retained placenta is mostly a result of oxidative stress. High electron flow from vitamin C lowers the possibility of this problem developing. Approximately 700 women die each year during childbirth. The use of proper nutrition and orthomolecular medicine has the potential to drop these numbers dramatically. Vitamin C is an analgesic, which means it can alleviate the pain associated with childbirth. The perineum becomes more elastic, lessening the likelihood of tearing. The mother's skin becomes more elastic as well, making stretch marks less apparent. The skin also returns to normal, much faster, postpartum. Adequate rest is essential for postpartum. What I have found with most vitamin C megadosers is their postpartum healing period is much faster, and they find themselves resuming their normal routine much sooner. It is essential to listen to the body and its needs. With adequate rest, nutrition, hydration, and orthomolecular medicine, a woman can heal efficiently. Vitamin C can often make a woman feel energized and back to normal, but there needs to be a rest period for the uterus to return to normal. Postpartum depression, anxiety, and intrusive thoughts are common. It seems as though this maternal mental health crisis doesn't get the attention that it deserves. Oftentimes, mothers suffer alone. Vitamin C and vitamin B3 are a powerful duo that fight all of the mental health issues that can arise postpartum. If a woman is not already taking both, she should start immediately at 10 grams of vitamin C as ascorbic acid or 3 grams of lipsomal vitamin C and 500 to 1,000 milligrams of vitamin B3, three times per day. Vitamin C babies are miraculous and they live longer. One study showed a positive association between maternal vitamin C intake and fetal telomere length. The findings may provide a method of understanding and preventing adult onset disease and mortality through intrauterine reprogramming. The color of vitamin C babies is always a beautiful pink and their bodies and lungs strong. A baby's cord should be left alone until pulsing stops. The stem cells within the umbilical cord have a job of repairing any damage induced by childbirth. It is also important to point out that babies do not produce vitamin K this early on because it thickens the blood and prevents those stem cells from traveling where they need to go. Supplementation and vitamin K injection are not necessary. Bilirubin usually will not be high in a vitamin C baby because bilirubin is an antioxidant. Because vitamin C is a superior antioxidant, 
A baby's body does not produce high bilirubin when vitamin C levels are adequate. SIDS is a terrifying reality. Dr. Archie Calacarinos found that babies are subject to very harsh condition outside of the womb, with oftentimes difficult childbirth, followed by inoculations. These things cause oxidative stress and cell death. When a child's body is overrun by oxidative stress and no longer has electrons being donated, there is nothing left but death. SIDS is caused by a cessation of electrons, and the only way to resolve this is with vitamin C supplementation. Routine vaccinations can cause harm to a child's body, and it is essential that if a parent chooses this route for their child, they at least dose the child with high vitamin C. Avoid any vaccinations at the beginning of a child's life. A newborn can be given a small amount of ascorbic acid. Some mothers find that swiping it in a baby's mouth before a feeding works. Other mothers add it to a bottle. Breast milk is a wonderful mixture of all things a baby needs to thrive. If a mother is taking high doses of vitamin C, she does not need to supplement a healthy baby. Vitamin C levels increase within the breast milk. We have found that high-dose vitamin C can increase the production of foremilk, causing baby to experience excess gas or even diarrhea. This issue will balance itself out. It's best for mother to lower her intake to doses that are comfortable for her and baby. Liposomal vitamin C will usually not upset a baby's stomach, since it is rapidly absorbed by the mother's lymphatic system. Vitamin C neutralizes all known toxins, making it extremely safe while breastfeeding. If a mother is detoxing and breastfeeding, it is imperative that she megadose vitamin C to neutralize those toxins and keep the bowels moving to excrete them. Mastitis can be avoided or treated with liposomal vitamin C. One gram per day will usually be enough. The testimonies of physicians and decades of scientific literature affirm that vitamin C is not only safe during pregnancy, but transformative. From shorter labor to stronger amniotic sacs, healthier babies, and improved postpartum recovery, the evidence is compelling. This approach strengthens mothers, supports their mental and physical health, and creates robust, thriving babies with lifelong benefits. It's time to challenge outdated myths and embrace a scientifically backed, nutrient-rich approach to pregnancy and parenting. The potential to reduce complications, enhance maternal health, and raise a generation of vibrant, resilient children lies in the simple yet powerful application of orthomolecular nutrition. The results speak for themselves. Stronger mothers, healthier babies, and a brighter future for families.